Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Today we are setting up the Epiphoneless Pool Standard. Watch and learn or watch and enjoy. First up we have to string it. So let's put some strings on. When it comes to measuring the right amount of string, I use the Marty Friedman method, where you put your index finger on the 12th fret and lift up the string with your thumb. Locking the string in place on the tuner is just bending it clockwise under the string and over to lock. For the opposite tuners, bend it counterclockwise then under and over and lock. Now tune up your guitar and stretch those strings. Be a little more gentle with the high strings, you don't want those to snap. Once it's tuned up, we can check the relief of the neck. The gaps showing means there is too much relief. We need to adjust the truss rod to only give it a slight relief. About a hair of relief. When adjusting the truss rod, it's best practice to have it in the playing position. But for the purpose of this video, I've laid it flat on a neck core. Make sure to only do a quarter turn at a time and retune. Clockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen. And now we have a straight neck with a hair of relief. This will give you optimal balanced action throughout the fretboard. A 
And now we're going to adjust the action using these two screws. You'll need a flathead screwdriver. Always check your action before you adjust, just so you have a starting point. Clockwise to bring your action down and counterclockwise to bring your action up. Now I did notice there was a bit of buzzing at the first fret, so I inserted my feeler gauge between the fret and the string. I noticed the string was quite low even when there was no capo on the third fret. Let's check it over capo next. Now on the higher E side I like to use a 0.10mm feeler gauge just to see if it will fit. If it's a snug fit it's fine, as we can see here it doesn't quite fit. On the low E side I like to use um, 0.25 of a millimeter and that does not fit either so we got two options replace the nut or shim it let's see what I'll do later on let's get back to intonation now adjusting the intonation is just moving these saddles backwards or forwards towards the tailpiece when the note at the 12th fret is sharp or towards the neck when it is flat it's as simple as that Unfortunately, I didn't get a good angle when I was recording, so um, you can't really see much, but I am intonating it. You just can't see much. I'm sorry, guys. Here I've decided to shim the nut, only because I don't have a new nut and I'm too impatient to order and wait for one. I'm using a Maranti veneer I think it was, just a bit of glue on the nut and then stick it onto the um, veneer. All glued down, now we've got to cut it to size, just using your scissors to get a rough cut. And using my leveling beam, we are going to sand it flush with the nut. And at this point, I noticed that the shim is quite thick, so I just sand it down. I take off about half of the material. And now we can check the fitment before we glue it on. Don't forget to clean it.
let's check both E strings. That's all we need to check is the height of both E strings. So just tune them up, use a feeler gauge in between the string and fret, with the capo and the third fret. And uh, if the gaps are adequate, then we're all done. Perfect, both fit, snug. And now we can glue on the nut using one drop on each side. Center the nut and uh, just push it on and hold it tight for about 2-3 seconds. I've got a bit of uh, glue seeping out so just a bit of tissue, wipe that off before it dries. And we're all done. Now, I know you're wondering why I didn't do any nut filing because the nut seems to have been filed before and the radius is correct on it. But um, yeah, that's it. We've just got to put the strings on, tune it up, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more because there'll be much more videos. I've got a lot of projects going on, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.